Welcome to the medical method. Today I'm going to be answering a few emails that I got about things that I missed on the MMI. Um, in particular, patterns, problem solving, um, and data driven questions. Alright, let's get down to it. I want you to think about what the MMI is actually trying to do. Okay? It's focusing on trying to identify qualities in candidates that will result in good doctors or probably good medical students for the university. Now, one of these things as a medical student is being able to process large amounts of data um, in the form of test results, blood tests of various types, integrate this data into some sort of solution and relay it on and be able to stand by it quickly. So give diagnoses, explain your diagnoses, etc. In data-driven questions that you get on the MMI, um, it's usually, the one I had was about um, getting information on donors. So you had like five, five different um, potential donors waiting on a list and you had an organ to give and you had to Explain your decision-making process, what you weighted more, less, why, etc. Um, and who you would give the organ to in the end. So, you know, smoking, age, family, um, prior medical history, uh, alcohol, and I think that's about it. So, in your data exercise, whatever it is, um, it's about practice, just practicing being relatively quick at weighting what you think is important. It doesn't really matter what you think is important, but just practice getting a sheet of paper, having a minute or two to read it, and then have your, your mum, whoever, your friend, your girlfriend, boyfriend, nothing, to your, to your mirror, doesn't matter. Get a piece of paper, write that donor information out, do a little table with the age, mix up all the values, and then read it and come to a decision. Okay, and pretend someone is challenging you. So if, if you want to pretend for the next 30 seconds that I'm the person challenging you, I'm going to ask, who would you give the organ to? Why? And why wouldn't you choose the other people? What have you waited most? What have you waited least? And would you change your choice if additional information was available? Seems like a lot to answer in five minutes, but it actually comes out pretty quick because all you have to do is name the person, say, who you waited, what, why you waited this less, and then you'll come to an answer. As long as you're ethical, you remember quite a amount of the data, you're not going to be expected to remember everything, but if you do, that's a plus. Um, and you have a reasonable analytical approach, I don't think you can go wrong with this question. For me, I think the tip for the exam is to be calm. If you've it's pretty hard to practice this, but if you're really stressed, you're going to mis mishmash the information. Okay, you need to be very concise and clear. Select out what's important. Remember the names of the people, who you would give the organ to, and why. And then the, the least waiting, most waiting, and some of the in between is useful, but it doesn't matter. So, like for example, gender. Okay, for giving. Majority of transplants, I cannot think of one that matters, maybe a, a uterine transplant if they exist. Um, it's not going to matter what their gender is. So I wouldn't bother remembering the genders. I would just say, look, I, I deem gender not to matter in this case, so I didn't remember them. You should know it by name, but you don't have to assume. Then you can talk about age. So you say, look, I remember that these two were sort of out of my age group. They were a bit older than I would expect, but the other three sort of fit into the reasonable, healthy group healthy range. So don't try and remember the exact number, just try and remember which candidates that you had fit in the given groups that you deemed acceptable for whatever reason. Um, I hope that sort of makes sense. And whatever your decision is, stand by it and basically always, if you get additional information, your decision will obviously change. Unless you think that they've given you a comprehensive amount of information, um, you should be fine. And I guess you should expect that they won't give you the information that's on the door on the inside. Sometimes they do, but you don't want to be wasting your time looking through it over and over again. Um, and again, if you do all that 
what I said mostly correctly. You're showing that you have the skills to read test results quickly, interpret, analyze, come to a diagnosis or a decision, and stand by it and explain it. That's the ultimate aim. All right, so that was one email. I think this video has gone a bit long, so I'm gonna make another video talking about how to solve pattern problems. So when you have different cards of different shapes, how to put them together, why you would do it a certain way, and how you stand by that decision. Um, thanks for watching this video. Check out my other videos up here. I made one on how to party like a med student when I was celebrating my end of year. Um, and look on my channel for more videos coming soon because I'm going to be making heaps because I'm on holidays and I've been heaps surprised about how much feedback and input I've had and it's been fantastic. So thank you.